all right welcome back everyone in this video we're gonna look at a analytical solution to this blending tank problem and just to give you guys a refresher i'm looking for deviations in my outlet concentration i'm looking for deviations in my outlet concentration due to okay due to deviations in my inlet concentration okay that's the uh, that's the model that i'm trying to implement here i want to see that if my xa1 my inlet concentration changes how how is that that gonna affect my outlet concentration all right that's the uh, that's the question that i'm trying to answer and let's see first off we need the uh, the equations and the assumptions all right and uh, if you've been follow if you've watched the previous video where i take the analytical approach I tell you I show you guys how I arrive at these equations so I have my total mass balance input uh, input on the left side and output on the sorry sorry input on the right side and output on the left side please pardon my dyslexia I'm sorry and uh, okay so the uh, dynamic species balance uh, is written as the ordinary differential equation here okay how how did I get these equations how did I get these equations this has already been covered in a previous video okay and I'll link it in the description the how has always already been covered now we wanna get a solution okay now we wanna get a solution and just to keep everything consistent the first equation the first equation you have one equation and one unknown the first equation is responsible for giving you the outlet mass flow rate okay and the second equation the second equation has another additional unknown which is the outlet concentration the outlet concentration okay and uh, just to keep track of everything the second equation is going to give me the outlet concentration so my degree of freedom is zero I can move on and use the correct solution approach all right I'm gonna take an analytical approach in this video before I uh, before I start solving this I'm just gonna use the first equation and uh, yeah just replace m m3 with that like how about that so my second equation becomes m tank divided by m dot one plus m dot 2 multiplied by the uh, rate of change the rate of change of x a 3 the rate of change of x a 3 plus x a 3 itself again okay that has not changed and that equals m dot 1 divided by m dot 1 plus m dot 2 okay multiplied by x a 1 times t now I want you guys to pause the video for a second I want you guys to pause the video for a second remember that this was my time constant and this right here this was my gain pause the video and see pause the video and see how the deviations in m1 and m2 how the changing how adjusting the both the inlet flow rates is gonna affect the dynamics is gonna affect the aggressiveness the sensitivity and how fast the process is all right and we're gonna discuss that in the later video hopefully and yeah just to give you guys just to make everything clear m dot one and m dot two are assumed to be constant for the sake of this problem we're not dealing with deviations in those two variables yet we're not devi dealing with deviations in these two variables yet okay now all right we need a forcing function i want to know how is my x a1 gonna change so my forcing function my forcing function is actually just a simple step it's just a st simple uh, step function so basically what's gonna happen is if i were to show you here let me digress for a second x a1 okay and how is that gonna vary with time okay so this is t equals zero and that's time so before before time t equals zero it is at its initial steady state condition and we're gonna call that we're gonna call that x a1 at t equals zero let me just zoom in so you guys can see hold up mm -hmm. all right x a1 at t equals zero so that was the uh, 
initial steady state value and suddenly as we go at t equals zero this is gonna jump up to it's gonna jump up to x a one plus delta x x a one at t equals zero plus delta x all right hold up let me just um i'm just gonna write it here the new value is x a one at time t equals zero plus delta x a one let me change the color scheme for this a little bit okay so you guys can better visualize this um we want to make it a little more pink right uh, that, that's better easier on the eyes okay easier on the eyes so this is how my x a one is going to change and i want to see how my x a three is going to change in response to this input in response to this deviation in the input okay now we're gonna cover some sophomore year we're gonna cover some sophomore year mathematics okay if you have how to deal with a first order model with a step response forcing function okay so if your forcing function is a step response how is your model gonna behave how is your output gonna behave okay so the differential equation that we're dealing with is of this form we've already done that now most sophomore level most um, undergraduate level differential classes are just a simple if else statement if this then this so that's what i'm just going to do for now if i have once again if i want to draw the graphs if my input is initially at a certain condition at a certain initial value and then at time t equals zero it jumps up it jumps up to a new value my input if my if this is the behavior of my input then the behavior of my output is going to look something and this is the general solution guys just to keep in mind this right here is the general solution to the step response this right here is the general solution to the step response and if you were to graph it i'm going to leave that as an exercise for you guys this is going to look something like this y of t initially y is going to be at its original steady state and then boom, it's going to start increasing increasing starts to, the rate of change starts to slow down eventually and it approaches its asymp it asymptotically approaches its final steady state value okay so it starts off at y t equals zero okay and then the final its final destination if i were to say that its final destination as its its final trajectory is going to approach and i'm using the term approach because it's going to that's going to be the limit k times delta x k is the gain of your process 1 minus e negative t over tau okay for our process that we've modeled we know the gain we know the gain and we know the time constant we know the time constant so by just using this general solution from our differential equations class we, we know that x a3 the variation in x a3 is just going to be its initial steady state value its initial steady state value plus the gain of the process and the gain of our process was m dot one divided by m dot one plus m dot two that was the gain of our process times delta x a one the deviation the total change the total change in x a one multiplied by one minus e raised to the power negative t over m dot one divided by the mass of tank let me just confirm that let me just confirm that we're gonna scroll up we're gonna scroll up and see oh sorry it's m dot one plus m dot two so let me just correct that m tank divided by it's m tank mass of tank divided by m dot one plus m dot two and just to make it even more clear for you guys i'm gonna write it as for my for the solution to my step response the gain is m dot one divided by m dot 1 plus m dot 2 that's the gain and the time constant tau 
is going to be equal to m tank divided by m dot 1 plus m dot 2 and the units are going to be seconds the units are going to be seconds i'm going to leave that leave that exercise on you guys to figure out all right so yeah that was our solution that was our analytical solution to a first order model with a step forcing function so if anybody asks you if or if you want to use big engineering words general um i'm gonna the analytical solution sorry analytical solution the solution to uh step response to the step response forcing function step response forcing function in a first order model in a first order linear model okay and this right here this right here what we've this is basically a summary of what we've done this is basically the went to college as dr william lee says this is basically the went to college summary of what we've done so far and a quick recap we had our schematic okay and we're, we were trying to map the deviations in the inlet concentration to the deviations in the outlet concentration that was our quest that was our quest okay and in order to do that we came up with our mass balances our total balance and a species balance all right and then we combine these two equations keep in mind both the flow rates were constant both the flow rates were constant as you can see here the both the inlet flow rates were constant and as we this and we said that the deviations the deviations in my inlet concentration the deviations are mapped by a step response this right here is the step function this right here is the step side heavy step or heavy side function and this is the visualization we showed you the visualization of the forcing function in our input variable and then we just digressed for a second this right here everything right here is just the uh, a review a recap a review of your differential equations class okay this right here is just a recap of your differential equations equations class and by using the general solution we were able to arrive at our final we were able to arrive at our final analytical solution oops my tablet is not very friendly with me right now uh, okay sorry I hope you guys can see this this right here is my analytical solution to the blending tank problem the analytical solution okay thank you guys thank you guys so much for wa watching and I hope you guys find this helpful all right good day